out a new sponsor to Health Blaze. All the information is in the description. Use the promo code above. Good filler one boxing at 18% off of all their natural products from deodorant, pomade, toothpaste, and much, much more. And they have additional discounts on their website as well. That's the healthblaze.com. Start December 20th. That promo code is good for 18% off. We go. What's going on? You back. Good filler score CB. And I had time today. And this is no way informed endorsing <laughs> Bob Arum. But this is part one of mistakes and um, fights that Al Heyman blocked from happening. Since everybody want to pull up and say, oh, Bob made it. And then uh, Bob let that fight stop happening. And Bob, you know, didn't make the Fury fight and Wilder fight. He stopped that fight. Even though no Bob didn't put a pistol to Fury head and make him sign the contract. Well, let's talk about the fights that a couple fights and I have more. This is only part one. Let's talk about the mistakes or let's talk about the fights that Al Heyman, you know, himself stopped from happening. And this is part one. I got plenty more coming behind him in the next couple of days. All right. And let's talk about how he created Anthony Joshua. You know, let's talk about that, man. We back. Good fellow sports TV. You want to talk real boxing talk, real trio boxing talk right here, man. We, 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 we the definition of that. All right. I don't have an allegiance. Once again, if top rank want to pay me. PBC want to pay me, The Zone want to pay me, Match Room, TGB Promotion, Yvonne Michaels, Ringstar, what up, Tim Smith from uh, Al Heyman Boxing, y'all want to pay me, go ahead, I, I, you know, email me, you can just drop it in my PayPal, let me know who you is, and I'll shut up, but I'm not stopping, I'm going to continue to tell the truth, and I'm going to try to be as, of, uh, as objective as possible, but let's talk about it, man, one of the fights Al Heyman stopped, and I don't know how many people are, are, are are informed on this was let's start off with the Kovalev and Stevenson situation with Al Heyman. So Donna Stevenson was entrenched into uh, talks with HBO to fight Kovalev. It was a formality for him basically to put his uh, name on the line. In the 23rd and a half hour, Al Heyman came over there, talked to Donna Stevenson, signed to Donna Stevenson, and took him to Showtime and robbed the fans of a big fight. I don't know if he sat there and he tried to chop it up with HBO. He tried to chop it up with Kathy Duva or it was a situation where Adonis Stevenson hired Al Heyman and he knew Al Heyman wasn't on talking terms with HBO. Now, the reason Al Heyman wasn't on talking terms with HBO is because they Bob Arum or whoever may have been in their ear and said that um, Al Heyman milked them, milked them out of a ton of money. They threw so much money into Andre Berto and other fighters that they said it wasn't worth it. And Al Heyman did not want to make the fights that HBO wanted to see happen. He did not want to make the fights the fans wanted to see happen. He did not first Berto and a lot of his other fighters to fight the, to fight the fights that HBO wanted to see and the fans wanted to see. So HBO cut, cut, cut the reins with him. You know, they was tired. They said Al Heyman had milked him out of money for high risk, for low risk, high reward fights. May you go back to Adrian Broner run versus all them sorry dudes he fought at 30. You know, that was around that time. A couple sorry dudes he fought at 35. Um, Andre Berto milking HBO. It was a ton of his fighters at the time just milking it. And they they were so fed up with Al Heyman that they they cut ties with Floyd Mayweather and they went over to Showtime. So it is what it is. It could have been uh, Oscar in their ear, Bob in their ear. But that's one of the reasons why he stopped working on, on HBO. And he and Donna Stevenson employed Al Heyman to help him save face and not fight Sergey Kovalev. I don't know if they negotiated or whatever. Obviously, Kathy Duva and them tried to sue uh, Donna Stevenson. But how can you sue somebody who I don't think put his name on the line? But right then and there, we never end up getting a Donna Stevenson versus another prominent opponent. He ended up fighting Badu Jack. He wasn't prominent. He ended up losing to Alexander Gosvick. He wasn't a prominent op uh, opponent. And Stevenson and Kovalev was set to happen. A lot of people were excited about that fight happening years and years ago. And Al Heyman took Adonis Stevenson. He took Adonis Stevenson and sent him to Showtime. And he just fought the Beakers of the world. And he didn't fight nobody else. He sat there and didn't fight nobody else. He fought Fanfara. He fought this. He didn't fight nobody. Al Heyman robbed the sport of boxing of Kovalev and Stevenson. To fight nobody. He fought nobody on CBS. He fought nobody on PBC Showtime. He he milked the belt. They made sure to protect him where he didn't have to take a mandatory. He fought once a year. He fought twice the next year. He fought once the next year. He milked his entire reign when he got with Al Heyman. 
before he was at with Al Heyman, he was going to fight Kovalev. He wasn't scared of Kovalev or whatever the situation may be. He signed with Al Heyman. He didn't get a fight close to that fucking magnitude. Close to that magnitude. You know, he let Al Heyman single-handedly ruin his legacy. Not everybody know him as Adonis Chickenson before what happened to him versus Gosvick. But you know what? As long as his pocket's right, that, that's all that matter for a lot of people out here that want to carry their one, divide it up, and they happy that these fighters getting paid. I don't care about what these fighters making. All I know is that's a fight he robbed us of. That's a fight he robbed us of. He went over there to take to, to rob us of a fight. He robbed us of Kovalev and Stevenson. And people are going to come back and say, well, you know, Kovalev ducked him because of a purse bid. And Kovalev would have to go over to HBO. Yeah, that's true. But guess what? Kovalev had a contract with the HBO. He couldn't go to Showtime without HBO blessings. And HBO blocked that from happening. They blocked that from happening. Some people must say, oh, Kovalev doesn't. No, man, if you know your history... Kovalev had a network deal with HBO. So without HBO blessing, no, he couldn't go over to fight on Showtime. They blocked that. From what I understand. You know? They blocked that. But Stevenson was working on HBO. HBO gave Stevenson his first title shot first, Chad Dawson, in the whole nine. And then again, he signs to Al Heyman and run. Now we go going to Leo Santa Cruz and Gary Russell. Now after this happened, and I'm going to spend an expensive time Extensive time talking on Al, Al Heyman and the Eddie Hearn Joshua situation. And I got a lot more coming behind these, bro. At least two more coming. You know what I'm saying? And now we talking about Regan Dial and Leo Santa Cruz, right? Um, apparently, Oscar De La Hoya got himself together, came back, and they agreed to split the fighters down the middle. One of the fighters that Oscar De La Hoya got back under Golden Boy promotion after the whole split thing when Al Heyman and them offered him $100 million for Golden Boy. And Richard Schaefer ran all his fighters' contracts out, him and Al Heyman, ran all those contracts out so they can be free agents and they can build the PBC model, right? Leo Santa Cruz is one of the guys he got, you know, he got control of. You know, he got them back. One of the kind I think was Leo Santa Cruz, uh, Matisse, Amir Khan. A few guys went back over to Golden Boy and Al Heyman, you know, agreed to. Oscar De La Hoya proceeded to make Rigan Diaw and Leo Santa Cruz. He was in talks with Bob Arum. Him and Bob Arum was on speaking terms, so he wanted to make that fight happen. Long story short, um, Al Heyman came back and took money out of his own pocket and bought Leo Santa Cruz out of the Golden Boy contract. He bought him out the Golden Boy contract because Leo Santa Cruz did not want to fight Guillermo Rigan Diaw. Oscar De La Hoya... As soon as he got control of uh, Leo Santa Cruz, he was going to make that fight. Al Heyman came back with money bags, and I don't know what the amount was. He came back and bought Santa Cruz out that contract, stopping yet another fight from happening, a fight people wanted to see. Al Heyman is the reason why Leo Santa Cruz don't fight nobody, bro. And all these quote-unquote trio or black media, they don't put no pressure on him. But a lot of these dudes quick to put talk shit about Tank. They quick to say shit about Terrence Crawford. They quick to say shit about Danny Jacobs. They quick to say shit about, you know, Stevenson over the years. But they've got their black media has gave Leo Santa Cruz the ultimate G pass, the ultimate hood pass. The ultimate. Al Heyman stopped that fight from happening. So when we get to talking about, oh, Bob Arum won't do nothing but stop fights from happening, he stopped Wilder and Fury, didn't he put, he put no pistol to Fury here and say sign that sign for that contract? He offered that bread, and Fury took the money. It was his decision. These are two instances that I brought up, and these are minor compared to some other shit I got to say probably tomorrow or down the line. These are minor, very minor. He came back and took his own money and bought Santa Cruz out of his contract to save Santa Cruz from Rigan Dial because he didn't want to fight Rigan Dial because he was scared of Rigan Dial. So the, and then it's great parallels between Santa Cruz and, and, and Donna Stevenson. Other than Santa Cruz and had to fight a tough mandatory and end up getting knocked out and injured. You know? They both was protected ever, ever since they contracts both got transferred or started working with Al Heyman. They ain't took a risk, didn't take a risk. The reason Stevenson took the risk because he didn't respect Badu Jack. He thought Badu Jack was sweet. And then he ended up getting knocked out by his mandatory. Alexander Gosvick. For Leo Santa Cruz, he ain't ran up against that yet. They refused to make him fight Gary Russell. 
But Al Heyman is supposed to be so pro-black. He refused to make him fight Gary Russell. And ever since he bought him out that Golden Boy contract, Leo Santa Cruz hadn't had to do nothing. So those two fights he stopped right there, two prominent fights that he had an integral hand in stopping. But Al Heyman is for all the best fights out there to be made. No, he's not. Al Heyman ain't the best fight the best. He ain't about that. And let's talk about how he screwed Deontay Wilder. Okay? Let's talk about how he gave Eddie Hearn life, how he breathed life into, life into Anthony Joshua. Let's talk about how he the same as, as Floyd Mayweather. If Al Heyman was for all his fighters, he was pro-black, and he wasn't about the green, then we wouldn't even be talking about Anthony Joshua being the, the A-side against Deontay Wilder. If he was truly for Deontay Wilder, truly for Earl Spence, he wouldn't put Keith Thurman, he wouldn't put uh, Anthony Joshua above him, man. Don't forget that they don't talk about this stuff. They don't talk about They act like Al Heyman is immaculate. He didn't make no mistakes. He made plenty of mistakes. Plenty of mistakes over the years he made. And his, one of his biggest mistakes is not giving Charles Martin over to Deontay Wilder. At the end of the day, this is the same guy that was going to fire $15 million per fight, or at least $15 million for Triple G to tune up against Steve Rollins on PBC. This is the same guy that found that money to get, to get a Gennady Golovkin. But he couldn't find a way to get Charles Martin $7 million to go fight Deontay Wilder. Had Deontay Wilder fought Charles Martin, it's a lot of, be, a lot of flack Deontay Wilder wouldn't be dealing with. He had been a WBC and IBF mandatory. I mean, champion, excuse me. Maybe Anthony Joshua end up fighting Vladimir Klitschko for the WBA. Maybe uh, um, Joseph Parker still has the WBO. Maybe Joseph Parker choose to fight Deontay Wilder because he got two belts instead of fighting Anthony Joshua. He get Joshua three, he get Wilder beat Parker. He got the WBO, the IBF, WBC. All AJ got to Super WBA. So we won't even be having an argument about 50-50. We won't be having an argument about who the A side, who the B side. There won't be a whole bunch of Deontay Wilder fans crying saying he deserved 50-50 and he only had one belt. But then we'll turn around and say Errol Spence and Bud ain't a 50-50 fight. It's 70-30 because Errol Spence going to have three belts or two belts to Terrence Crawford one. Tell me the hypocrisy right there. Al Heyman single-handedly fucked Deontay Wilder. Just, just right there, he fit, he served up Charles Martin, knowing that Charles Martin wasn't shit, knowing that Charles Martin wasn't gonna go over there and be Anthony Joshua. He served up Charles Martin for Eddie Hearn to pay him. If Eddie Hearn got seven million to pay Charles Martin to fight Anthony Joshua, why don't Premier Boxing Champions and Al Heyman have seventy seven million dollars to pay Charles Martin to match that to fight Deontay Wilder in a unification bout? No matter if it was gonna be ten thousand. 5,000, 1,000 people to sit there and watch that fight. Then again, Deontay, you're not sitting in this situation. You're being moved wrong, my brother. Do you ever sit there and ask Al Heyman, why didn't he give you the Charles Martin fight? Because they didn't believe in you like that. They didn't believe in you like that. Al Heyman stopped fights every day, B. Then they serve you up a $120 million contract for four fights or a three-fight $100 million contract. And Al Heyman tell you don't take it. He tell you don't take the fight. So now AJ was ducking you. He ducked the 50 million. They come back, offer you 100 or 120 million, however you want it. And people want to say, well, you know, they're going to they gonna try to control who, who Deontay Wilder fight. Al Heyman control who Deontay Wilder fight. You think really that, you think really, let's keep it 100. You think Deontay Wilder really want to turn down that money? You a fool if you think he want to turn down my money. He ain't had no choice. They told him, no, nah, you're going back to Showtime. They told him that. And I knew I knew that was the case. He was forced to do that by whatever bonding contract or, or agreement they got in his contract. When he when they asked him at the uh Dominic Brazil press conference, you know, why did you turn down the money? And he was like, Oh, Shelly, he delegated to Shelly Finkel. A guy that got a lot of shit to say, a lot, a lot a guy that loved to whistle blow, a guy that loved to talk. A lot of shit he delegated to the white man. But then again, you say Jarrell Miller getting milked by a white man, you get milked by Shelly Finkel. You can't even answer your own question on why you turned down $120 million. Why you turned down a three fight $100 million deal from the zone. You can't answer you can't answer it. Because you don't do you you don't you got a wrong team behind you. And this very same man that's advising you to turn down this money, that's advising you, you know, to, to move how you move, and it's the same nigga who hurt your career. 
He the same dude who can't get you a network deal with Fox. He the same dude that can't get you a network deal with Showtime. Why is Showtime came out and announced the Deontay Wilder deal and invest a hundred million to Deontay Wilder? That's CBS, a huge corporation. Why isn't Fox invested that type of money to Earl Spence while Triple G sitting there with a four or five fight deal for a hundred million fight Steve Rollins for 15 million? Why? Why? Why did this man run the IBF belt that he had control with over to, over to Anthony Joshua? He ain't running that WBC belt with Sean Porter over to Crawford. He ain't running that IBF Earl Spence belt over to Terrence Crawford. He ain't running that Keith Thurman Super WBA belt over to Terrence Crawford. He ain't ran nobody else belt over there. Except for one other guy, and I'll talk about him a little later. I'll talk about him in the next video. You know what I'm saying? He only reason he gave Adonis Stevenson belt up because it was a mandatory. But Wilder, Wilder, listen to me. He took the IBF belt that should be yours right now. You should be a two, 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 uh, two uh, belt champion, WBC and IBF champion right now, or a title holder right now. But he took that belt from Charles Martin. He took that belt in Charles Martin. And he sold Charles Martin off for seven million. You telling me they had fifteen to offer Triple G, and they couldn't give Charles Martin seven million to fight you. So you had that. Now you begging Anthony Joshua. Now you going back and forth in the public opinion about Anthony Joshua. When you shouldn't even have to say nothing. You should be the A side. The fight should have been happening. Now he got three belts laughing, and you got one belt. Well, you could have had two. And then Joseph Parker would have came and fought you three. So then who in control now? What can they say now? Al Heyman did that to you, bro. Al Heyman didn't believe in you. He created Eddie Hearn. Then he let Eddie Hearn, he let Sean Porter, you know, come over here and get beat up by Kell Brook. That was a mandatory, though. In good faith, he let Kell Brook come over here and take Sean Porter belt. Then he can't let, let his fighter Kamada. You know, get beat by Jamie McDowell twice. One in Corpus Christi, Texas. Then they both was in America. He let Eddie Hearn come over here and get several fair shakes. He thought Eddie Hearn was his buddy. He ran him over. He ran him over two belts. Porter belt. He gave him to Kell Brook. Charles Martin belt. He took sent him to the UK and gave it to Anthony Joshua. Knowing when Charles Martin didn't have no chance of winning that fight. When he could have gave that to Deontay Wilder and just paid Charles Martin the bread. She even Deontay Wilder should have been willing to give, give up his whole purse to give it to Charles Martin to have that, that belt. But Al Hammond don't stop no fights. Al Hammond don't, know, don't make no mistakes. And this is the tip of the iceberg right here. Al, Bob Arum stopped all the fights. Bob Arum is terrible. Yeah, I agree. Bob Arum is terrible, bro. I'm not endorsing him or nothing. But that's not that's not act like Al Heyman has this immaculate track record. Wrap up. He stopped Stevenson and Kovalev. Now I know a lot of you dudes don't know nothing about boxing before Errol Spence got here. Before 2012, around that time, y'all didn't know nothing about boxing. Y'all just started to get in boxing. You know, y'all just started to understand what a jab was. Y'all just talk about 50-50 A side. Y'all just not starting to understand that. Okay? Then y'all probably didn't know about the Rick Down Santa Cruz thing. He stopped that fight too. He single-handedly went in there and stopped both of those fights from happening and they was deep in negotiations. And, and the guy y'all said the king of the heavyweight division, some of y'all favorite fighters in Deontay Water, he advised him to turn down $100 million contracts with a, with a Joshua fight guaranteed in there. And that fight was in there. I don't care what nobody said. Another counter offer, four four or five deal, hundred twenty million dollar contract because they wanted to know what Anthony Joshua was making. Nigga, you got a hundred million dollars for four fights. You, it's NBA players that ain't getting that. It's NFL players that ain't getting that. But you chastise AJ for turning on fifty million life changing money. But then again, the same guy that made a AJ, who made AJ a champion, and, and, and Al Heyman is advising you to to do some stupid shit again. The very same guy that failed to run that belt. Come on, man. Get out of here, man. Y'all know what it is, man. Goodfellow Sports TV. Don't forget to check our sponsor out, the Hillblaze, thehillblaze.com. Promo code Goodfellow1Boxing. 
Get you 18% off the 100% all natural products. Lotion, soap, foot soaks, bath bomb, deodorant, toothpaste, hair part made, much, much more. Website promo code in the description. 100% all natural products. Won't be mad. In addition to that, don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Reach out to the email if you have a business question, inquiry, response, ship, or a video request, or you just want to chop it up. Appreciate it. Best donation you can make is to share this video. Get this out here. I'll be coming back with part two sometime this weekend. One time for the one time. Goodfellow Sports TV. We gone.